in the short cases to start with. These are likely to develop practical skills. Things like examination of a joint, such as the hip or the knee. You may be given a short history of an injury or pain and be asked to demonstrate how you would examine the joint. In these cases, you will be provided with either a real patient or an actor who is prepared for you to examine that part of their body. The examiner will indicate if there are certain things that you should not do or certain areas that should not be examined. You might be shown some results from pathology tests, an ECG, an X-ray or even spirometry results and have to interpret these in the context of a clinical scenario you've been given. Have a look at common ECG presentations and common stories that come before you would actually perform that ECG so that even before looking at the ECG you have an idea of what you might be looking for. In your answer about an ECG or an x-ray or a skin lesion, have a formula that you discuss as you're doing the examination to let the examiner know that you have a systematic way of approaching these reports. With an ECG, you need to look at the rate, you need to look for P waves, you need to look for the, the width of the QRS complex. These and other factors are the way that we all look at ECGs. We also have similar strategies for examining X-rays and spirometry results. And it's important to make the examiner aware that you are doing these things in the right way because that is safe. You may be asked to educate a patient for instance, a patient who has been recently diagnosed with asthma and needs to be advised how to use an inhaler. Or a diabetic who has recently started on insulin. So you will need to be able to advise them on how to administer insulin after dialing up the correct dose, where to administer the injections and problems to look out for. You may also be asked to advise them on correct use of a blood glucose machine. You may be asked to demonstrate the application of a bandage or a splint in the case of an injury. In this situation the patient may not actually have the injury but you can still choose the appropriate bandage or splint and demonstrate that you know how to apply it. Some stations will show you a photograph that may be a lesion, a rash, or a wound and you may be asked to explain how you would manage this. Remember to analyse that wound and that photograph in a particular systematic fashion. If it's a rash, explain the distribution of the lesions, explain the site on the body on which you've been shown the rash and talk about whether the lesions appear to be raised and so forth. Another good exam question would be treatment of a mock emergency. For example, a snake bite, a collapse or a cardiac arrest. Again, be sure that you have a system in place so that when you're faced with a, a situation like this, you can easily flick into emergency management mode. This will make you look confident and capable and reassure the examiner that you're safe to work as an independent GP here in Australia.